Hey everybody, it's Rod from the Photo Fair coming back at you with another video. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the Leica Dual Range 50mm Summicron. This is a fabulous lens, and it's actually pretty affordable for a Leica lens, of course. Uh, that is a caveat. Before we get started on this Leica Dual Range Summicron, don't forget to mark your calendars for March 25th. Next month, just a little over a month from now, uh, is the Photo Fair at the Newark Pavilion in Newark, California. We have already got that hall nearly stuffed full of tables. Uh, it's going to be a great show. We're going to have everything from film and darkroom supplies right on up to the latest, most modern cameras from Nikon, Canon, Sony, Fuji, Panasonic, all of them. And all that vintage stuff that so many people enjoy uh, taking a look at, like the Leica Summicron uh, lens right here. So don't forget, March 25th. Uh, we're going to have, uh, hopefully, some guest speakers like we usually do. We're setting those up now. Um, so check photofair.com for more information about this upcoming show. It's going to be great. So let's talk about this. What do they mean, dual range? What's that all about? Well, this is a Leica M-mount lens. These were made from the 50s up through the end of the 1960s. Um, and one of the limitations of Leica M rangefinder cameras was that you really couldn't focus very close. And that was really due to limitations in a rangefinder style uh, of focusing. The closer you get to the camera, the more parallax there is because it's not focusing through the lens. It's focusing through a couple of windows in the camera. And so that led to limitations. And single lens reflex cameras were really picking up steam in the 1960s. Nikon's F uh, was a particular juggernaut of the era. And those focusing right through the lens didn't have to deal with parallax. And so a 50 millimeter F2 lens on one of those Nikon F cameras or any other Pentax Spotmatic, whatever it was, those could focus usually down to about 18 inches, literally twice as close as you could get with a rangefinder camera. So Leica decided, hey, why don't we try to make a system where you can use a close focus uh, capability and not have to use this clunky Visoflex thing that turned it into an SLR and made it clunky as heck, uh, what could we do? So what they came up with is the 50 millimeter Summicron dual range. And the way that the dual range worked was you had a normal focusing ring that would just focus between about three feet and infinity. When you got to the hard stop, and I'll show you in a close-up window over here. When you got to the hard stop, you would just pull this out and move it across that little hump right there, and now you were in dual range. You would then mount the uh, goggles to there, was these little optical goggles. And so what those would do is would correct your viewfinder so that you got a parallax corrected image and the rangefinder would continue to function. That's sort of what they were trying to do there. And you could now focus uh, much closer. Now, I don't have the goggles. I got this lens for a couple hundred dollars less than they normally go for because this one didn't have the goggles. I don't need the goggles because I'm not using this lens on a Leica M rangefinder camera. So what, uh, now it'll still work on a Leica M rangefinder camera. It's just, you, you won't be able to use the dual range part you know, without those goggles. But what you do is you push the button on the top. Again, you can see that down in my little video down in the corner there. And then you can continue to move this uh, across like that. And now I can get all the way down uh, to about 20 inches. So, which is kind of comparable to what 50 millimeter F2 lenses on SLRs of the era would focus to. So that's really cool. Now, many of you that have been watching these videos uh, over the years, it, know that I use a, a macro focusing adapter. So this M-mount adapter for my Canon R5 uh, has its own extension back here. And I talk about this in a couple videos I did last year. And that allows a normal M-mount lens to already focus inside of 18 inches. Well, couple this with the dual range capability of this lens, and I get down to about a foot. And like a design this lens, to be sharp up close. Because typically, rangefinder lenses weren't designed to be sharp up close. They didn't have to be, because rangefinders didn't focus close. But Leica took that into account with this lens, and this lens does not fall apart as you get up close with sharpness, uh, like some other rangefinder lenses do uh, when you do that. So this is really good. Let's take a look at just how good this lens is 
Um, and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at some photos here right now. All right, so uh, God decided to deliver up some snow for us today. We'll see if we can make some interesting photos. Taking advantage of the dual range Sumacron's super close focusing uh, capability, at least for a M mount lens. So let's check it out, see what we can do. Yeah, so there you have it, guys. Um, those pictures are pretty darn good. And uh, this lens performs every bit as good as a, as a standard Summicron 50. But for some reason, these fetch a little less money on the open market. Now, mint ones with the goggles and all that, those, those will go well above $1,000. But if you're going to use it on a modern camera, you know, like a Sony or a Nikon or a Canon uh, mirrorless body, you don't really need the goggles. You don't need all that. And the collectors don't want it, right? Because it doesn't have all the stuff. And so the price just kind of comes down, you know, around, you know, like I said, I got this one for about 700 bucks. Um, and I got it at, at Seawood Photo. And I did a trade, traded him some uh, stuff that I had and paid the difference. Um, but you, you you could get this for seven or $800 on the open market. Again, if it had the, if it was in a little better shape, this is in, I would call this very good condition, uh, but definitely not excellent or mint like collectors tend to want. And it doesn't have the goggles. So again, the collectors are out of the picture on this. This is a good quality user lens. And funny thing is, is Seawood Photo also had one in better shape than this with the goggles, the original box, all that stuff uh, for the collectors. I think they wanted a thousand dollars for that one. They sold that one. They sold that one right away. This one kind of stuck around a little bit. This is a, 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 a little secret here because it's, you can't get a 50 Summicron, a standard 50 Summicron, version one, version two, version three, version four. You're not going to find them for $700 in this good a shape. Uh, and in many ways is a better lens. I think it's every, I've owned, uh, the version two. No, scratch that. I've owned the version one and I've owned the version four of the Summicron. And this is every bit as good as I remember those being. And this also has the dual range where it focuses close. I mean, it's a win-win and you can find these for a little bit less money. So kind of like that, kind of think that's really cool. Uh, and so I hope this was kind of helpful uh, for you. Uh, if you're looking to have a premium uh, vintage Leica lens, um, this will perform very well. It is as good or better than a lot of lenses today. Now it's not going to give you the performance of a Canon L series lens or one of Nikon's premium pro grade lenses. No, the modern lens is a little better. But if you're comparing this to something from Voigtlander uh, or um, uh, or Laowa or something like that, this is going to perform every bit as well as those, maybe even a little better. And uh, despite those being very good modern lenses. Um, and so I think it's worth the extra money. And, and let's be honest here, there's a little bit of panache uh, using a Leica lens, right? It's kind of like the Ferrari of, of, of lenses, you know, or Lamborghini lenses, you know, whatever uh, analogy you want to use. You're, you're really using uh, something uh, that was, this was state of the art in its day. This was what all the, you know, the serious, real photographers were using back in the day. That's kind of fun to be able to, to have something like that. A brand new Leica uh, aspherical Summicron 50, they get $4,000, $3,000 for those. And it's very similar to this, the, to this lens in terms of its design. Again, it has an aspherical element in it, which means it's really well corrected for aberrations and such. But that's kind of the, the sandbox, if you will, you're playing in with this lens. 
Anyhow, uh, see if you can get to the photo fair, pick one of these up, find them on eBay, wherever you buy your used gear. But I, I highly recommend uh, looking for camera shows in your area, wherever you live. They're a lot of fun. You mingle with people uh, that are, uh, have the similar interests to you uh, into the either vintage photography or the modern gear, whatever it is. Um, uh, photo shows are great. Uh, so anyway, I'll also do a plug. The week after our show uh, is the Seattle the Puget Sand, uh, Sound Photographic Collector Society is doing their annual spring show. That's a great show. I'm planning on going to that show. That's a week after ours. And then a week before ours, there's a great show. Uh, it's actually the oldest show on the West Coast. These guys have been doing the show for 65 years. They've got their show the week before ours in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, and that's the Western... I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, I think it's a Western photo collectors group or something. Uh, so that's a good show. I can't make that show, unfortunately, but uh, I highly recommend it uh, if you're uh, in the uh, uh, desert Southwest. Uh, and then up here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, again, the Seattle show week after ours. Hey, why don't you do a West Coast swing, you East Coasters, and just hit all three shows, one, two, three, right in a row. And uh, hopefully we'll see you out and about or right here on YouTube for the next video.